Hey guys, Dib the Awesome here to give you yet another Monster Legends Guides where we talk about monsters, moves, rune sets, partners, all that jazz. Today we are taking a look at Patient Zyber. Uh, this is the latest um, T-Race, yes, the latest tier, the latest T-Race, uh, hosted by Mr. T. <laughs> I pity the fool. <laughs> Specifically this fool. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the latest team race monster um, who received a huge, huge life. Just one huge change. Uh, but, uh, you know, a huge change. You know, I just kind of, like I was going to say, one change, you know, one, you know, one small change. They wound up being a huge change. Uh, but it's a really good change. It's a really, really huge change, and he might play out a lot better now on defense than you might think, uh, and what so forth. He is also has a new uh, debuff that's really, really good, really, really nice. Um, people might find it annoying after facing it after a few fights, uh, but it's looking pretty good. It's <laughs> it's looking it's looking really great. Uh, so this monster has a power of 3,388, no problemo, it's not a damage dealer, this thing should not be your main source of damage whatsoever, it is not a damage dealer. Uh, life, 33,779, pretty awesome life, especially for a monster that can go either in the team speed slot or your denier slot. Uh, or you know your support slot or whatever. You know, usually the, in in Monster Legends, there's three roles. There is the denier, there's the damage dealer, and that last slot is usually whatever the person really wants. It's usually a support or a monster that's good all around. It's a well-rounded monster, or it's it's fine on its own. Even if the other two monsters die, uh, you know, usually rainbow rune monsters, strength, life, and speed on it. Uh, it's just overall not easy to kill uh or just another monster that that's high on damage quality but again not easy to kill uh has really good traits what have you uh this is a really good life for it uh and this guy can fit into both uh the you know this extra guy role of a you know supporting with full team speed or a denier role with just full speed runes uh we'll get to again we'll get to that uh why you can run on full speed in a bit it's part of his new change uh, again, really, really good change for him. It's a really, really good uh, buff. His speed is 3,531. Please take note of that speed. The law of ML states if die denier is faster than yours, uh, <laughs> the odds of me winning are higher. <laughs> uh, as says by the common sense gospel of how speed works. <laughs> if this monster is faster than this monster, then that monster might as well not have a kit. Because that uh, your monster is going to just keep denying the enemy monster. <laughs> Uh, pretty much. That's that's pretty much how the the game works since the day dawn of man, like the dawn of this game. <laughs> uh, this is relevant for the denier role. It's also really good for team speeder holds, uh, holds, <laughs> speed, team speed holder roles. Uh, simply because it has a really really high natural base speed. So if it's in the same rank as another monster, if they're running the same team speed build, obviously your monster will go first, uh, unless you're fighting. Well, duo of patient cyber, same rune builds on both parties. Uh, then it's just a coin flip at, th at that point, I would think. Um, but for the most part, uh, this is phenomenal speed. This is this is really good. Again, it goes well with his recent change. His trade is tough. If one thing, you know, it already has a great life. It already has a phenomenal speed. Uh, what more could it possibly have? Well, it has tough. So you have a 35% chance not to do anything to it. I mean, like, it's it's protected by 35% of avoiding status effects. It, it might not be frozen. It might not be stunned. It might not be denied. What, whatever have you, uh, fill in the blank. It, can't, it might not be DOT'd. It might not be anything. Uh, it's, this is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best hardened traits in the game. Uh, if it's not uh, bulwark, it's, it's this. 35% is really, really good. And this thing is kind of a denier, so it's <laughs> it's kind of annoying. It's kind of ridiculous, and it's got it's got this as its trait. Its relics are two staffs, phenomenal because you can run a draining staff. I I personally like the revenge staff because when you hit when you get hit by something, you drain like over 100 stamina. Uh, not even at max. Like I can't remember the max amount, but uh, for sure it drains well over 100 once you fill it in with some levels, my boys and gals. Uh, really, really good, and you can run a energy regen staff, so if you ever run out of stamina yourself, uh, bam, 
counters drain. It's just that while it is really, really good, it's also very counterproductive because odds are the enemy's doing the same thing. <laughs> so it's eh, it's what it's it's what you make of it, I guess. Uh, but these are really good slots, but also really bad slots because again, kind of counterdict each other, especially if it's a mirror matchup. Doesn't really do you much good. Uh, or just doesn't do anything at all. It doesn't affect the match because, just because of, again, counteractive procs. Uh, these are really, really good slots, but they come at a price of being really counteractive or just counter. They're just countered by each other uh, because that's just it. So as long, I guess, so as long as you're not not fighting a similar matchup uh, or just a monster with the same relic slot setup, this is really good. Uh, overall, really, really good relic slots. For some reason, the combat role is attacker uh, on the wiki here. I <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't I don't think they took the time to change that. This is more so a denier role than anything. Uh, Enric Vermone. This deals very heavy metal damage to all enemies, removes all positive status effects from all enemies, applies nano virus and total blind to all enemies. Before his uh, change, before his huge, huge, huge change. Uh, a lot of people were kind of worrying about this uh, because this is the only way he can really remove positive effects. Uh, Nanovirus is actually the new debuff that this monster does. It blocks all positive effects. A lot of people are like, well, if it doesn't remove positive, remove good effects, then if the monster has, you know, the positive effects on it and you apply it, then, you know. Uh, but... In that logic, it doesn't really need to remove positive effects because it's blocking the, the positive effects. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't really know. I don't really see the significance of removing the good effects when, you know, you have nanovirus, which blocks the positive effects. <laughs> uh, I think this is really, really good on a number of occasions. If you're an enemy, you know, if you, let's say you miss an AoE deny and the enemy goes for like an AoE buffs. Uh, you know, they don't get the double damage or, like, you know, the precision, what have you. As long as they have nanovirus on them, they don't really benefit from any any buffs they get. Uh, this is a hard counter to buff-reliant monsters or counter, or not counter, combo-related monsters uh, that rely on weakening and then going for the big damage. Uh, so, it's that's just how na nanovirus works. The best use for this thing is for evasion reliant monsters uh, like Kokora, which he is faster than he is. He does hold the faster speed than Kokora than Zyron, so he can go before uh, either of those monsters either do probably cooldowns activation. I would say, uh, which is again, the, I, I didn't really say the, what the new thing was, but you know, spoiler alert: it's cooldowns activation, which is amazing. Uh, but in terms of just dealing with like things like Kakora, for example, that rely on AoE evasion buffing everyone on your team, uh, this kind of shuts that down <laughs> and prevents you from really doing anything. So you have to run the remove uh, negative effects on Kakora uh, to really fight against this in, in any capacity uh, at all. That's, that's that's how it is. Um, which at that point he is he has done his job. He's pretty much to prevent your Kagora from really doing any huge like deny protecting or uh just protecting in general. He's really good at disrupting buff reliant supports and or deny monsters. Uh as long as he's doing that, he's doing his thing. He also total blinds, like this this ultimate also total blinds, so if he misses like the nano virus or whatever and you know you know, he lands Total Blind on everyone, then that's for sure deny. That's really awesome. Uh, Total Blind's looking like the the go-to thing nowadays. Uh, since, uh, I didn't really bring this up. Uh, I was going to wait till the end. They are actually nerfing deny and just deny. They, they are nerfing the... Uh, all, all the deny in the game. They are, they are nerfing it by pretty much updating the traits and the just just the concept of it so let me let me just start off by saying freeze and p possession are no longer going to be chainable what i mean by that is you can't just let's say you're using like hydrotilla you can't just do aoe freeze and then do the 50 percent freeze you know how the consistency that is going uh you usually freeze everything all the time or you know kihaku for example you usually deny things all the time if you go first you go with the aoe deny and then you go for another one 
uh, and just keep denying for days, they are nerfing that. They are hugely nerfing just common deny in the game. They're, they're nerfing that. They're nerfing it to the point where once you free something, once you've you know possess something they get the recently possessed and or recently freeze uh immunity D just like stun stun has always been garbage <laughs> compared to the other two of its fellow common denied brethren because you could never chain stun you could always chain freeze and chain possess but you could never 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 chain stun they are now implementing that to freeze and possession now this is a huge change. <laughs> this is so, so astronomically huge to the, the just the life of Monster Legends. Deny is such a important factor of the game, or at least it's a thing that everybody kind of hides behind. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a huge competitive concept of just avoiding, like, huge amount of damage. It's pretty much the only, like, things between what you level, like, fully ranked monsters, pub stomping, uh, just your lower level teams like that was lower level teams hugest reliance was deny Like possessions like freeze true. We're getting more monsters that have like the to traits But to just kill chain deny period. That's that's huge. That's so astronomically huge So cooldowns activation and like total blind seem to be the hugest things at this point They're, they're gonna be the most commonly used things because you can <laughs> you can no longer Chain, chain deny. That's that's <laughs> that's huge. That's so astronomically huge. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be a really good change or a really bad change. Oh, they're also updating it where if you're immune to freeze, you're also immune to uh, mega freeze. Same with uh, I don't I don't think I don't know if stun. I don't know if you're immune to mega stun. If you're immune to stun, I I can't remember. I don't know if I I remember reading this. Uh, I get this information from the forums, the social point forums. Uh, I saw it at, on a YouTube post from Amigbo, and I, I, I looked over it, and it seemed pretty huge. I think the things immune to stun now get immune to mega stun, uh, too. You know, again, anything that's immune to, you know, you know, if you're immune to freeze, you're immune to mega freeze, too. Uh, mountain monsters are actually immune to mega stun now, so... How it was in the originally, it was immune to stun, freeze, and mega freeze. Now they're adding mega stun. So if you have necromancy and you're running Ingersus, well, <laughs> Ingersus is just now <laughs> not bothered by anything. So Zion is, Zion is just kind of completely worthless against uh, Ingersus. Uh, did I say Igneous? I can't remember. But uh, completely worthless against Ingersus paired with necromancy. She says she can't do anything. She can't do anything to the giant. <laughs> Uh, so cooldown activation seeming like the, the go-to plus total blind at this point. Unless there's a recently total blind buff in the future. Or, you know, immunity that people are going to get. Uh, you, you already get it from Alvira. You get the blind, AOE blind immunity. But there hasn't been a, uh, I don't know if they, they're going to make it where if you're total blind, then you get like a total blind immunity or whatever. Uh, but that's, that's just how it's looking at this point. Uh, mutated strand active deals very moderate special damage to one enemy. Activates all cooldowns on one enemy. This is a single target cooldown. I personally recommend it because hey, you never know when you need another cooldown activation on a you know a monster. You just don't want to ever have any time to use its high powerful skills. Uh, specifically charmless and Zyrons, I would say, or any anything cooldown heavy. Uh, so Sammy, you know, there's just the big old huge nemesis monster names. Uh, they, they hate getting their cooldowns activated. Warthog's not bothered by cooldowns activation, but I think every other nemesis monster pretty much is. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, I do till it also kind of not bothered, uh, because he does ha hold the one turn cooldown AoE freeze, uh, which is really, really awesome. Um, it's not, it's not even a popular pick for, you know. Just because <laughs> it is, re it's really good for a situation. Again, but again, it's it's looking pretty good against pretty much all the high tier stuff at the moment. Even countering its own kind, it even counters pa patient cyber. Is the antibody of patient cyber. You want to stuff a patient cyber? Use your own patient cyber. <laughs> uh, make sure you go first. That's all. That's the lo again logic. <laughs> uh, so this is looking like a good skill. Run it. Uh, increased attachment. This deals moderate special damage to one enemy. Applies nanovirus to one enemy. Three turn cooldown, 35 damage. Applies nanovirus. Not worth it. Reason being, it's a three turn cooldown. It, it's just not good. <laughs> uh, it only does one enemy, and you're waiting three turns to use it again. I, I wouldn't run it. it. It doesn't look pretty good, my boys and gals.
So don't, don't run it. Uh, Emidemic Pathogen. This is his AoE cooldown. It's 30 damage, return cooldown, 24 stamina. I will say run it on all builds. It's your, it's the new thing that was added to it. It makes him really, really viable on full speed builds and on defense now. I'd run it. It's looking pretty solid, pretty spicy. Uh, however, um, this monster is hugely countered by the barrenness. Uh, just, just straight up. <laughs> so I, I can see in the future people mostly using like this on defense and people... Uh, don't be surprised if you wind up losing to someone running barrenness. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, at that point, it would be if you're running it like... If your if your defense is like t full team speed, and the enemy's running a fast like, even though it's a slower comp, but he's running a monster that's faster than your other two. All they really have to do is use barrenness, deactivate the cooldowns on like that that monster, which is probably like maybe a denier of sorts or a damage dealer with deny skills like Raboka, for example. If you ever watch any of my videos, I run two speeds and a strength rune. Uh, so if that enemy attacker that has a deny can go before you know your other the enemy's other two monsters or you know in this if it was the vice versa your monsters you know uh, all they really have to do is you know if you're running a faster rebulka aoe deny pretty simple pretty simple concept my boys and gals uh and then you just win from there it, it's pretty much you know kind of defeating the purpose of him being your denier because again baroness kind of just says no <laughs> she just says uh no, <laughs> uh, no, my my guy's good to go. You, you don't really get to control anything, <laughs> uh, just simply because of her being able to remove negative effects and applying uh, cooldowns protection. Uh, that's that's her only retaliation. To be honest, she she can only really deactivate the cooldowns of a single person because she doesn't really have an AOE that deactivates all cooldowns on like a zero turn cooldown everything's on at least a one turn cooldown in terms of an AOE scaling uh, she does hold a single target scale so that's the that's the th huge thing to worry about because it doesn't run on a cooldown uh, but yeah this is this is his best scale it shuts down anything that's not Baroness <laughs> Like anything that relies on cooldowns, it kind of shuts it down. Bacteria esophagus. Uh, this removes all positive effects on one enemy and applies nanovirus to one enemy. I think this is relatively good, specifically for Elvira matchups where you just want something dead. Like a lot of comps just run like maybe team strength and they won't run like speed. They're just going to run like really slow monsters and just focus on damage. Uh, a good way to win against those comps is using this skill. Because again, if all your monsters are going first, then all you have to do is bam, use Bacteriophagus. Uh, beat the thing that needs to die. Like, like just can't be on the field. It, it takes too much advantage of the Elvira buff. Specific examples would be Baratagor and or... Uh, any extra turn damage dealer that you you just need it gone it, it just needs to leave the field uh, and this is your opening this is the skill you use uh, I, I would run this uh, specifically for those matchups where you, you just need you just need to be able to kill it it, it just needs to go um, I, I would run this skill because it's situationally good it, it is it can be really really useful it also blocks any future positive effects which can come in handy I, I again I would run this this is just really good situationally and you, you'd kind of want to run uh, in a situation where it actually calls for it because uh, beyond the cooldown, it, I will say if it didn't, like this used to be an AoE total, like an AoE blind, not a total blind, it just blind, uh, this epidemic pathogen, uh, which basically made him very, very situational. Uh, because a lot of people are currently running Flamerion and, which might change now, people might just run this on defense. Uh, people were just running Flamiron, and he, he just isn't good against artifact matchups. He's he's not good against Timeiron, uh, because again, he can't affect Timeiron. He can't affect, you know, anything that's not affected by debuffs. So it's it's pointless to bring him if most of his kits just shut down by it. Baroness just kind of shuts down anything he does really, which is huge. Uh, it's just a hard counter. It's like if if you're if he, the enemy brings Baroness, there's not much you can really do against that.
I don't know how many books uh, they actually relate to. She might actually be in mechanical. And he, she, I know she's an evil, but she also might be in mechanical. So he, he probably has a lot of. He probably has a high rate matchup that's really bad for him. Uh, well, this th again, this is just kind of this is how it is. I don't know what I was gonna go from there, but uh, are, are we still talking? Yeah, yeah, we're talking about this. Um, this is still good. Uh, no, that was me. That's me personally. I, I would personally run the skill because I've always said you should run the AOE cooldowns activation, the single target cooldowns activation. So that's two skills that you have to run at this point. And I recommend running the AOE nanovirus. So at this point, I, I would again, I would personally just run this for like the occasional, really good situational matchup. Uh, if you don't really care about that, you can run the total blind. The problem with this is if you're fighting an Elvira matchup, you can't blind them anyway. <laughs> uh, this is a single target total blind skill. Uh, again, total blinds are a really good go-to. So maybe instead of like the single target cooldowns, I might actually just have you guys run this. This is probably what I'd have you run. Uh, I don't really, I don't think I really need to go in depth of how nanovirus works in terms of the AOE scaling. I already said nanovirus pretty much prevents your team from getting any positive goodies. So that's that's pretty much it. It's just utility skill. It doesn't matter what the damage is. You you just run the skill. It's it's a really good debuff. It blocks your enemies from getting double damage set up on you. Uh, if it's not a Hercule or anything that removes negative effects with an extra turn, it ain't getting buffed. <laughs> So that's really good. Uh, I, I think the... I, I don't really know how, like... Like, nanovirus is a current... Like, how does it work exactly? Like, if the enemy removes the nanovirus, do they still get the buffs? Does nano... Like, virus protect... Still protect the... Uh, the Preventing them from getting buffs? Or when you remove the nanovirus, do you get the buffs at that point? Uh, I don't know how nanovirus works to its fullest, but uh, nanovirus is looking pretty good. Uh, still, it's it's just that one huge question: Do they get buffs when if the effect is lifted, or do they not get buffs even though the effect was lifted, even though it's lifted before that? That's a huge, 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 huge question at the moment. Uh, total blind is uh, like again, like like I said, total blind is currently the best deny thing at this point. Uh, so I, I'd probably run it. So this is this is the skill sub set. In other words, <laughs> this is the skill setup I'd have you have. Run the AOE nanovirus. Really good situationally in all aspects of anything that relies on buffs. Like if it's a buff reliant cunt, <laughs> cunt, <laughs> comp, yes, comp words. <laughs> if it's a buff reliant comp, this is your go-to. Uh, single target total blind. If it's something that's immune to cooldowns activation. Bada bang, bada boom, total blind. Uh, before the change, I I would say a full speed one wasn't too crazy an idea, or at least it could work because of this skill. Because you could just all you had to do is total blind the enemy denier. They miss, then you go, you do your thing. Uh, you just make sure your your monsters are faster than the enemy's team speed holders. No big deal. Uh, so this is a good skill. I'd have you run it. It's good for if you just need something not to land anything. I'd run Pacterial Ophagus, uh, just for those Elvira, Gakora, any AO, like, evasion reliant monster matchup. I'd like to do damage, I'd like not to die. Like, if it's like a Taiga, for example, if you just want to destroy Taiga, like, do, do damage to him, just, just, or Alex Bone, for example. You don't want to deal with that too much. This is your skill to go to. You might not think this is a huge skill, give it a shot, though. Do those matchups, you'll find them less annoying. <laughs> the reason why Alex Bone's hard to kill, like Taiga's hard to kill, so occasionally, not all the time, because again, he's not immune to deny, or it's like his camouflage doesn't protect him from deny. Uh, you know, just not being able to damage something and then pretty much getting their turn in is pretty annoying. It, it can be, <laughs> it can be really annoying. Ev evasion is just really, really good because again, it's not a deny; it's a buff, so it doesn't really affect any of like tough monsters or anything with trait 
that uh, lowers the chance of being denied because, again, they're not denying you. They're just preventing you from you doing anything to them, which is pretty much denying, except it's not, it doesn't follow the concept of your trait. <laughs> like, if, even, if, even this, if this guy has tough or he can, like, 100%, like, avoids all debuffs, wouldn't really matter, again, because he, he's, like, the, the enemy Kakor is not denying you. He's AoE evasioning on his team, so he's giving them a buff, which avoids all things, and pretty much guaranteeing them the opportunity to move. So you run, you, I'd say running this is really, really good. You might not find it huge at first, but I believe it's a really good for a lot of situational matchups, you, which you will bring them to, because this is, that, that's the best thing for this man. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> it's really, really good. Uh, I think the skill is showing really good potential. Uh, I'd run the AoE cooldowns activation and bada bing, bada boom, your your move set. Run everything in skill grips three, and yeah, your, your AoE cooldown activation. That's all you need. That's all it wants. That's all you you really need. <laughs> Again, I said that twice. I'd say it twice. How about some rice? <laughs> hey, hey, I got the I got the rhymes. I got the the funky flow. I got the uh, dough. <laughs> I got the dough. <laughs> Just goes to show my raps on the down low. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, overall, fantastic monster. He does have some counters, though. I, I will say he himself counters himself. <laughs> it is it is very relevant that he does kind of counter himself. He can't really stop things with spammable buffs. I think things with a spammable buff can kind of get around him in terms of like what I, what I mean by the spammable buff is like it also removes negative effects if any monster has like a spammable buff skill that also removes negative effects it, it might not if nano if the nano virus doesn't like block the new effect then that's that's kind of huge but again i i don't really again i don't really know i haven't really gotten a chance to use patient cyber yet so I, i'd have to see how that that goes how that actually works uh, but overall, um, really, really good. I don't know how well he's going to run on defense because, again, the Baroness matchup. Uh, I, I just don't know how well that goes. I, I just don't. <laughs> uh, I just imagine, like, if you put this on defense, people bring Baroness. They deactivate the cooldowns on, you know, the next monster in line and then just proceed to deny your team. I just... <laughs> I don't know from there, but, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how well this thing actually runs on defense. It might run really, really good, or it might just not run good at all, and you might just lose to the same Baroness matchup. You might just see see a lot of your defense lose, losing because they just brought Baroness. That might just be a thing. But, again, we'll see. We'll see how well it's doing uh, in the time to come. But, overall, I think this monster is looking pretty good. It did get some pretty critical... Uh, buffs that I think will help in its gameplay on defense and offense. Uh, so yeah, final verdict. You can run him speed or team speed. Uh, that's about it. Because he doesn't really have any huge damaging skills. I, I don't think running him a damage rune is really worth it. He doesn't really do all that much damage. Uh, his cooldowns are also really high. Two to three cooldowns are pretty hefty. Especially on all of his AoEs, have th all of his good AoEs have three turn cooldowns, which is pretty huge. He counters himself, so if the enemy has the faster cyber and you don't really bring anything to counter that, well, it's, it doesn't really do you any good, does it? <laughs> uh, well, that's that's overall everything. I think this monster is good. Uh, try out his nano virus. I, I think you'll like it more. Uh, if you play around with it, with the, the is better matchups or just like things where it's a buff reliant comp. If the enemy really isn't buff reliant, nanovirus doesn't really do you any good besides the DOT effect. All all it is is a 10% DOT at that point. Uh, if the enemy isn't using any buffs, it, it doesn't really do you any good. Again, it's pointless. That's why fighting them against artifact monsters originally was pointless because again he couldn't really do anything to him now he can do he can do quite a bit to him because of the cooldowns activation uh he does hold a higher base speed than Timerons. he holds him over flamerons 
Uh, just a good majority of monsters in the game. 3,531 goes over so many monsters, so many high tier monsters at the moment. Uh, anything that doesn't really rely on cooldowns isn't bothered by them, like Kihaku, for example. He he doesn't have too high of cooldowns for his AoEs. However, he, the chances of him actually denying Cyber, I will say, are slim to none. <laughs> Simply due to tough and the change to 50% skills now. Uh, but that's about it for this video. That's all you need to know about Pace and Shy... Sorry for, like, the, the, mass of, the mass amounts of words that were wrong in this video. But that's it for this video. I'm Did the Awesome. Catch you guys later.